welcome everybody uh, to uh, our town hall meeting. Um, I have just a brief ministry overview for you, but this meeting just came out of uh, our last Servant Leadership Council meeting was in April. We have another one next week. And our SLC thought, well, hey, let's just pull the congregation together and, and do an update and just let people ask questions about uh, uh, the, the ministry, questions about what we can do in the future and so forth. So that is the purpose for tonight. Not a huge agenda. So this is your time. I, I do have just a brief um, sort of maybe 10 minute uh, conversation uh, here that I want to get started for us. And I'm gonna share my screen, hopefully. And if that works for us, can everybody see it? Yeah. Wow, I'm getting better at this. There's usually a, a, a tech delay. Um, and so, um, so, so one of the things when I think about um, what it means to um, just sort of navigate this time we're in. This is one of the verses that just I keep coming back to over and over. Psalm 119, 105, uh, where it says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. And the reason why um, that comes to mind for me is, um, sorry about this, hang on a second. All right, sorry. Um, the reason why that comes to mind for me is that um, the way I've always thought about that verse is, is this idea that, that God doesn't promise to show us my, uh, miles down the road in our journey. Uh, God does give us the big, what the, the, the $10 seminary word is eschatological, which means in time. So God does give us the big, big picture that one day God is going to restore, recreate, and redeem all things. Christ is going to return. Uh, and we're going to be in a in in a a, a new day, in a new life. Um, but until then, the Lord doesn't promise to give us um, months, even years down the road. The Lord promises to light our steps. And so this this verse, very practically taken, uh, you know, if you think about um, uh, a lamp by your feet, those of you who uh, have been a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout and done camping or done any kind of camping, a lamp by your feet and a light on your path is going to show you the next step or two, and that's about it. Um, it's not going to show you uh, miles down the road. And so um, I think that's important for us to keep in mind. The Lord is going to let us know what we need to know when we know it, um, when God wants us to know. And so we, we're going to seek his wisdom and seek his guidance about the next uh, several steps in the life of our church. Um, one of the things that um, I, I want to center my, my conversation on just a little bit is, is, is what, how we do lean into the next normal. Uh, I've started to use that terminology rather than new normal, but next normal, because there are probably going to be multiple next normal. Um, and so one of the things that as a church, we think about what I've been calling the three levels of consideration. So, the first one is, what are we legally allowed to do? And, you know, our governor is going to set those guidelines and, and, you know, we will, it's been our, our practice to, to obey the law and we'll continue to obey and follow, uh, the governor's guidelines. Um, and then though, a second question is, what do we have the capacity to do? So not everything we're legally allowed to do, we may not have the capacity or we might not have the capabilities to do. And so that's something we're, we've got to wrestle through as a congregation as well. And then I, I believe probably the most important question is what are people psychologically willing to do? Um, and the example I give here is um, at some point in the very near future, I think, uh, the gym that I go to uh, is going to be allowed to open. They're going to have to space out their equipment and all this kind of stuff. But unless something changes and unless my will and, and the Lord changes my mind, I'm not heading in there for a long time. Uh, I don't feel comfortable in there. Um, you know, if you've ever been in one of those places, people just sweat all over the stuff. And, and uh, so I'm just not going to do that. And, and, and as much as I love the, the nationals, I'm not going to a ballpark um, probably until I've, I've got a vaccine or there's a cure that, that, that for sure is going to cure me. I'll say that now. Uh, time may may wear me. Down. Um, 
so on May 19th, we'll be sending out a survey by email for those of uh, in our congregation who don't have email, we'll send it out by snail mail uh, to help us to, to, to determine what people are willing to do. Um, please fill it out. And so it'll be a very hypothetical, uh, it'll be a snapshot in time. Nobody's held to anything they answer, but you know, it, it, will, it will look something like um, assuming a vaccine is going to be available in 2021. Um, what are you willing to do? Um, what, do you, what, is your, what is your level of comfort in these certain type of things? And it would just be great for us to be able to hear from you and to be able to get a sense of, of your, your, what you're thinking and what you're feeling in your heart. Um, so uh, anytime we think about leaning forward, there are those three levels of considerations that we're always having to pay attention to. So at some point, um, uh, stay-at-home orders, as we know them now, uh, will uh, uh, are going to be relaxed. And at some point, we're going to be able to gather publicly. Uh, there's a few things that I think it's helpful for us to know as we start having those conversations together. And the first is OTCC is never closed. Um, We've never closed. We're a bit. We're not a building, and we never have been. Uh, we currently have uh, more people potentially viewing our worship services uh, than we do that attend live on Sundays. Now I know you know uh, somebody asked me about this count the other day, and I said, well, there's so many views on YouTube times you know let's say one and a quarter, and then somebody said, well, you know we've got two different uh, computers signed in, so there's two, and so I think more people are watching if if if. But, but we're not, not sure. Um, additionally, all of our table groups, uh, with the exception of one, are continuing to meet. Um, this one is the one in Goodwin House, which obviously uh, is, is not able to meet. We are studying uh, scripture together. Uh, we continue to stand with our mission partners um, in su their support. Uh, we're continuing to serve the most vulnerable in our community uh, through open table. Um, as we think about uh, opening our facility again, we're going to use caution. Our goal is uh, the safety and the well-being of our community and our homes and our congregation. Um, it is not Christian hospitality uh, to gather people and potentially make them sick. Um, <laughs> gathering people too soon would jeopardize, jeopardize our lives and also our Christian witness. Um, the unchurched in our community will be very wary of organizations that bring people together too soon. And I actually have um, you know, firsthand uh, uh, sort of anecdotal evidence of this. Uh, Jody and I meet with people in uh, uh, our community who are not churched on a regular basis by Zoom. And one of them was, was very generous in spirits. And I, I don't want you to hear this wrong, but he was seriously asking me about one of the other churches that do, does Open Table, the, the Presbyterian Church. And he said, you know, what, what's the deal with all the people congregated there um, getting food. He said, can't they figure out how to get them spread out? And it actually bothered him that um, he's having to wade through a, a, a crowd of people. And he wondered how in the world is that safe for them? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, there's a psychological journey that the church has got to be thinking through about it as our witness as well. Um, so while we're not rushing, uh, we are planning on how to safely gather again. Uh, so, for example, uh, the Servant Leadership Council has auth authorized the removal of the lower level sanctuary pews. Uh, this will allow us to reconfigure the seating to ensure safe distance and use our largest room for other purposes, uh, such as open table, when open table is able to eat inside the building again. Um, alive, if they want food pantry dis distribution, um, I've even uh, contacted the city as far as could we be a testing site, could we be a blood drive site. Um, you can imagine um, we have multiple, multiple choke points in our building. Um, the very biggest room we have, our sanctuary, is also probably the easiest one to get into um, and create a one-way traffic type situation. One way up the stairs um, into the uh, room and then one way out of the room by the other stairwell. And so we're going to be able to use that room now for multiple purposes. Um, it's almost impossible to um, physically distance. I went in there with a, a tape measure and tried every way. If we tried to put people six feet apart, let's say, with pews, we would have been taking out almost 
uh, two pews in between the others. Our pews are really close together back to back. Um, and so we've temporarily taken them out. We're stored uh, in the choir room and in the room above that. Uh, long term, we'll determine if we want to use chairs on a permanent basis. And if it's financially feasible, we'll refinish the floor, all that kind of stuff. Uh, while the pews are out, the floor actually looks pretty good, um, but it does need some some TLC. Uh, it was just done this morning, oh, um, and so uh, there's. Uh, I'll just throw a couple pictures up here for you. You can just imagine um, with me. First of all, I think the room looks absolutely beautiful like that. Um, it's interesting that the pews, in some ways, didn't match the the pews. The date of the pews. And the architecture of the pews don't match the the simple architecture of the, the room. That's what I, I found interesting. Um, but can you imagine tables now across the right hand wall? And can you imagine people coming in and either donating blood or picking up food, going around toward the front and then around and out the left hand side of your screen and out the exit door? I mean, it's just simply going to be able to be used for uh, more things. And obviously we'll set up chairs for us to worship and be able to do so with flexibility. Having families clustered where we can, having uh, people uh, safely distanced in other places. Um, there's just a couple more uh, pictures there. Um, we won't leave the trash cans there, but I thought they kind of look, you know, like faux parishioners for a while at least. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that you guys look like trash. I don't mean it that way, but what I mean is <laughs> it's, it's something in the room. <laughs> Anyway, I'll stop. But, hey, I know this is a big concept. I know it's a big idea. I know it can be a little bit shocking, to be honest with you. Uh, how about let me stop here and just get some of your thoughts and feedback. Uh, Phil, I think that's how the church started. Yeah. First, Baptist, First Baptist took the pews. That's why the new ones don't match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually think it's so exciting hearing you talk about some of the options that I wouldn't have thought of taking the pews out, but now that they're out and thinking about the options that it presents us, I think that's, it's amazingly exciting. Yeah. And by the way, we've already staged uh, the old choir chairs. Um, we, there, you can't, I don't know if you can see them in one of the other pictures. They're in the back ready to be put out. Um, so when we're ready to, to reopen, we can configure seating um, in, in just the most effective way possible. Um, Brian and I are a part of a um, group uh, that may try to meet uh, the third week in June, a group of 10 or 12 uh, for a three-day type seminar. Um, we'll probably um, use that room because uh, we can spread the group out safely um, you know, and so it, it will provide the challenge with our fellowship hall is um, getting the choke points getting in. Um, you know, once you're in the fellowship hall, you can spread out, but it's just getting in there that, that makes it really tight. So, are you going to put up hoops and backboards? Are we going to? <laughs> <laughs> No, but if, if this lasts too much longer, I might put a pitching machine. <laughs> it's um, a beautiful room without being distracted by the, the oh. pews. You can really focus on the windows and oh, the actual details. That's true. Yeah. The windows pop. And so, yeah. if, and, you know, obviously, financially, we don't know what we're going to be able to do. But if... If, if, if the church decides, hey, let's, let's, let's use chairs in here long term and get really nice ones that match and all this kind of stuff, um, maybe there's a, a way from, for an interior person to say, hey, here's the chairs that would least take away from the beauty of this room, because that room is stunning like that. Um, yeah. So, um, of course, we can hit the floors. The, the, the floors need some TLC, and so we'll be able to do that um, while the pews are out, too. Mm -hmm. Financially, obviously, Lord willing. Um, mm -hmm. Are we ready to move? I, I saw some chats, but Brian, I can't get to the chat um, while I'm in screen share. They were mostly about not being able to unmute, so I think they're... Yeah. Okay. I think and it's beautiful. <laughs> that should be sorted out now, so if you couldn't talk earlier, uh, you should have the ability to unmute now. Mm -hmm. Okay.
<laughs> Phil, I think it's hysterical that the, we're going to be able to use the choir chairs, which we tried, you know, on and off to um, get rid of. Now that we know there was a different purpose. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Isn't it crazy? Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe I should hang on to that typewriter I found up in the. <laughs> yeah, hang on to that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, this is not gospel here. This is just Phil. Um, but what I'm thinking, more than likely when we gather again, again, depending on what we're allowed to do, uh, we'll probably offer two services. Um, initially, probably no Bible studies on site. You know, getting people into um, into small rooms is not ideal because uh, you have to get them out. <laughs> and then more than likely, no children's ministry initially inside. Um, you know, on, on good times, uh, and good weather, uh, we may be trying to think creatively about how we can have things happen outside mm -hmm. and we'll be become, uh, strong. Um, we'll, we'll get to know our city and the city park, uh, reservation process and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and then we'll communicate through all media and platforms, our plan. Now, let me just stop here. Um, because I have just one more slide, but let me stop here to, to take questions. I have, just I have a question. Will we have music, live music, worship music? Yeah, you know, uh, we have- I miss singing as a congregation and being together, but I know that might be a tough thing to pull off. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, it, well, okay, so let me talk about music for a little bit. Um, first of all, and boy, I forgot to put it on a slide. Um, our, uh, Jamie Rust, our worship leader informed our SLC back before COVID, uh, that, um, he feels called into other type of work. And so Jamie resigned effective, uh, Easter Sunday. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I loved Jamie. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. Oh, and he's a terrific young man. And, um, and so, uh, we are in a, in a, in a, a music search and uh, I've been meaning actually was uh, going to share it with the congregation March 15th, <laughs> our, our first Sunday out. And so uh, obviously we had other, other things front and center that day. Um, and, and we've been in this, is this weird mode of um, trying to, to figure out um, how to record, produce all this kind of stuff. So, until we're back live, let me answer that first, Sue. Um, uh, one of the things that we started out doing is the, the YouTube videos and everything. Um, I, I've learned since that there's some real serious copyright issues we need to start to mm -hmm. pay attention to. Um, nobody busted us, but we shouldn't be doing what we did. Um, so, um, And so starting next week, March 17th, mm -hmm. a friend of mine, is going to provide for us uh, six to eight minutes of sort of worship music. So that even at home, even if you want to just take that as a time to close mm -hmm. your eyes and meditate, or you want to take that time to sing, mm -hmm. but it's going to be different than just us dropping in like presentational pieces. So, mm -hmm. um, and it'll be uniquely for us. Mm -hmm. um, and Sean, his name is Sean Allen. He is a, a wonderful guy. Um, he's actually down in Florida. I used to work with him in Richmond. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. through, through this time, you know, we'll be able to, to uh, utilize Sean to help us with that. And I think that's going to be helpful for people. Um, mm -hmm. um, and it'll be just Sean and the piano. And, and uh, but again, for us, not necessarily, you know, which is different. You know, he can speak mm -hmm. these to, to what I'm preaching about and all that. Um, when we come back, Sue, that is a really good question. Um, I hope so, and we'll, we'll, we'll obviously work on the personnel side of that to happen, uh, having guest leaders until we know what we, we're gonna be able to do long-term. Um, but I have read stuff about singing is, is, is a hard thing. Um, just saw something today on, on Facebook again uh, from a congregational consulting group that, that I, I think denominational advice is, is, is don't do it for a while uh, because it's, it's a way the virus spreads. I heard about the choir in Washington State when this all began that a lot of people, someone was asymptomatic and spread it through like 60 people in the choir just mm -hmm. through singing. So yeah, it is, it breaks my heart, but yes, that makes sense. Yeah. You can maybe, sing with masks. Yeah. Maybe we can <laughs> out. Yeah. You know, so, but um, I, I'm not, um, 
our servant leadership council is going to be working through, I shared with our deacons last night, just a series of questions that, mm -hmm. that we're going to be pursuing. We'll share it with our SLC next week in our meeting, but, but, um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things like that. You know, how do you do children's ministry or when can we do children's ministry? Yeah. Um, singing, uh, simple as uh, we'll probably have to have two services because of, you know, limitations. So we'll, we won't be able to share hymn book survivals. Right. So if things yeah. like that, Oh my, yeah. Can't pass an offering plate. Um, oh my. you know, it's going to need to be bring your own communion or we we have those self-contained communion kits where, um, the juice and the bread is all contained and you can pick one nice. up and then it's just really very different. And so be very different, yeah. uh, we're going to have to reserve uh, what service we can come to, to <laughs> so we don't all come to the same service. I mean, we'll, we'll have to work on how we do that. Uh, wow. But so service that's it. all questions. The online is working. I assume you'll yeah. keep that too. So yeah. Yeah. Um, all questions we're chasing though. Very good question. Um, uh, let me, I've got one more screen to share and then let me just open it for all your questions and then I'll, I'll uh, be able to see you all again. Um, so um, financial update, March, we covered our expenses. I think I shared that in one worship services. I think we, uh, we uh, our giving was about $100 more than our spending. So praise God. Um, April looks really strong. Um, uh, our, our congregation was extremely generous in April. Um, exponentially more um we should know more next week uh the exact numbers but like um if march revenue uh was forty two thousand, i think april's revenue was right around seventy five thousand. i mean it was just really a generous month um and now but we we hold that with humility right because may might not be and and so we just thank you so much for your generous support um we're we, we have, obviously, you can imagine, we've, we've slimmed down our budget as much as possible. Um, at the same time, uh, investing in, in uh, uh, other areas so that we can do ministry virtually like this. So, um, but we're really, really grateful for your support. God is working, God is working through the ministry. Uh, we can see that. And, you know, Crystal, uh, in one of our staff meetings or, or another time not long ago, it really brought this home for me. She said, you know, God knew when we, we changed our name to Old Town Community Church and we emphasized community, God knew COVID was coming. And I just believe that God has a powerful role for our church in gen uh, specifically, but in his church in general in the post COVID reality. So mm -hmm. for those of you who are on the call with uh, Dr. Ivy, uh, we have some serious, um, ministry uh, to engage over the next, I'd say, probably five years because of COVID. Um, but the Lord is able. And uh, as, we, as we do our part, as we submit our wills to his will, uh, as we seek to, to go where he wants us to go, the Lord will lead us and show us how to um, serve and, and to, um, you know, be responsible. You know, um, th there are going to be so many people who are spiritually open. And we have uh, you know, I've heard people call it opportunities. I see it as a responsibility. You know, we have a responsibility to step into um, that that place where people can share their questions and concerns. So let me um, uh, go back from the screen share and just open it to you for not just me, but for Brian, for Crystal, for members of our Servant Leadership Council, any questions uh, you might might have. I have a question. Yeah. Um, have will you been able to stay current with our mission obligations? Yes. Um, let me let me speak to that. Um, so uh, our mission partners um, that we support through our general fund, right? So mm -hmm. Baptist General Association of Virginia, Uptick, uh, Carpenter Shelter. Um, Brian, you might have to help me here. Alive. North, North Star. North Star. That's the five right there. Yeah. Um, what we did, Viola, is it w our SLC approved in uh, a sort of a second extra meeting in March, a slim down budget. And we approved um, uh, slightly less support for our mission partners, but not much. I mean, not much for March. And we gave them full 
um, gifts for January and February before the shutdown. So we are, we are, and I've emailed them all and said, we're standing with you. Um, we consider you essential. And, um, and as the Lord enables us, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll obviously keep supporting them. And if we're able to put that back to full, after we get a better picture of where we are, we certainly will. But we, we're keeping money going to them um, because we feel they're really important. So, and honestly, um, personnel, missions, the, the, the essential facility things we have to pay, that's about it for our budget right now. A little bit of extra for some things um, uh, and ministry expenses, but that's about it. And Lord's providing. Any other, got to be some questions. When does Major League Baseball start? Yeah. I mean, all, all the questions we know have no answers. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, hey. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's not related to what you were talking about. But I couldn't really pay attention Sunday after you start talking about food and yeah. that chicken catch story. <laughs> so <laughs> I really need that recipe, Pastor. Okay, I'll get it to you. Is because that I've been thinking about it all week, all during the service. I tried to pay attention. So you might have to go back. I have to go back over the sermon later on. But I really want that recipe. All right, I'll get it. This, this, this is Evelyn, right? Yes, it is. I right. love food. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll get it to you. It, you. You can't go wrong with it. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a, make a comment, Brian. You got a good haircut there, bud. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. That's an important town hall agenda item. <laughs> I want to rub your head. <laughs> 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 yeah. anybody anybody else so well, uh, pastor, pastor for just a quick um uh note here i think i thought you mentioned that they got to be baker starting to resume operations back again right starting yeah. are, are, are they back at full scale or are they in some sort of limited capacity very limited. So Together We Bank operates in two modes. One is their basic, their revenue. In other words, the, the cookies, the granola, the apple chips. Um, and they do that with some permanent employees they have. And then their other mode is their educational and empowerment. They're not doing their educational empowerment, which is what brings most people in the facility. They're on a skeleton. I say they, they don't have more than four or five people at a time in, in the building. And I've kind of given them that half, you know, and I'm over here in this half and, uh, and it's working. The rest of our staff is working from home. They're doing uh, a great job um, from that. They're extremely, um, you know, for those of you who um, our SLC knows this or Dave and Carl know this, I send them a staff report every, every week um, about you know, our staff, just as a sense of accountability and, uh, and I know Brian and Crystal are on this, and I think Jan is somewhere. There's Jan. Um, uh, they're doing just a great job. They're they're working really hard. Um, you know, they both have not only their their regular job responsibilities. Um, Jan is not coming to the building and cleaning the building, but she's she's actually calling through our our database and and touching base with people, which is really important. Um, and Brian and Crystal not only have their normal responsibilities, but they're, they, they're, they babysit me from a tech standpoint. <laughs> That's added a lot to their plate. <laughs> so. Well, you guys are all doing a great job. We're really thankful for everything you're doing to keep us connected, keep us fed spiritually and mentally uh, here tonight. And just thank you so much. And uh, know that we're praying for you and, and you know, whatever we can do to encourage um, all of you in your ministry work. Mm -hmm. 
Amen to that. Thank you, Debbie. That's really sweet. And um, appreciate that a lot. You know, Debbie, I, I agree with you because I've been so pleased with our staff, the creative ways that you looked at ways to keep us connected, but also the, the things where people are having concerns and issues, your availability and just how it's worked so well. It, Carl and I, we've been doing this for two years in the Valley, but now you're making it so easy. We're never going to find a church out there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alan Mars is, is, Alan's doing an incredible job for us. Alan's basically putting our video stuff together. And for the month of, so, so for the time this started, we've been webcasting live from the sanctuary. Uh, for the at home series, we thought, you know, why don't we do it from our home since we're having a series about being at home. And so we, we had to pre record that so that so so what ha what's happening this month is we're, we're pre recording in the middle of the week and then Alan's putting it all together and he, he's just doing a great job. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, my sense is we'll probably come back and webcast live in June, but we'll, we'll see uh, what's what what works best. So um, But yeah, a lot, a lot of good work. Uh, do we need to add recipes to the OTCCE news? Yeah, okay, yeah, that'd be a good idea. So I've got a chicken Florentine too that's off the charts, but I won't, uh, I'll, I'll share that one later. Well, if you're gonna do it during the, uh, during the sermons, we <laughs> no <laughs> one. recipe. Full-on cooking demonstration. Yeah, hey, cooking I, with Phil. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm so glad to see that Together We Bake was at least getting some stuff going because one of the things, of course, my mom is at Goodwin House and yeah. so I don't get to go see her. Um, she's getting really tired of the <clears throat> offerings from the kitchen, although they have great, great, uh, great things that she can have. But I sent her cookies from t chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. from Together We Bake for Mother's Day, and she just got them, and she loves them. Oh, that's great! Mm -hmm. Well, you know that is their revenue engine, yeah. and so we wanted to get them up as soon as we could. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, they 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 shut down themselves. We didn't shut them down, and uh, so we're we're glad they're able to do that. Well, and they're doing a they're doing a good thing too. Where when I ordered the cookies for mom, I was also able to pay for some cookies to go to some of our first responders. Oh, that's so nice. sweet! Yeah. And so that is a way to both help them and say thank you. So check out Together We Bake because there are some some good opportunities to support them and some of the people that really need supporting from all of us. You know, Judy, that that brings up a point that I didn't mention in the in the update. But we are regularly shopping, for lack of a better term, our community not 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 little shopping, but like where can where are the gaps that we can as a church stand in and help with, and um, and so whether it's supporting first responders or getting in behind a live, you know, we don't need to reinvent the food distribution, you know. Uh, ministry they do it incredibly well and i think they're going to need a ton of help over the next year you know after the just food distribution the the, the economic impact um, is going to be extraordinary and so there are going to be multiple ways that that um but you know one of the things our, our nonprofits are as we touch base them you know what do you need they're still assessing their needs too yeah. you know and so but. well Something also that came to my mind, uh, because of course my daughter Kelly uh, works at a restaurant in Crystal City, which is closed down for now. They did have a meeting uh, because some of the restaurants now are indeed supplying meals, supplying lunches for the nurses or whatever. But one of the things that seems to be lacking greatly is supplying meals to the folks who are on the night shift. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so that is another area where those folks are doing the same darn job and they're not getting some of the benefits. And I think 
it's good. It's a possibility that like the place where she has worked may come in and help fill in that capacity. That would be great. Wow. Yeah. So that's something to something to think about because folks are sending the, you know, sending the nurses lunches, but um, the guys on the night shift aren't getting it. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you guys amazed at how sunny it is where Jody is sitting? She's just, you know, sunny out there in the courtyard. <laughs> I was actually Over here thinking at Ken that. Norton. I like just the background. And it's still uh, daylight. <laughs> yes, it is daylight. <laughs> yeah, we we, we, we can do it too, so Sue, sneaky. but it messes with two people. Ah. <laughs> and I just went back to Hawaii. Outer space. Oh, Jody. Like their courtyard area, and I thought she was out there earlier, and I said, "How is it so light there?" And so <laughs> <laughs> it is sneaky. They weren't Sue, on screen. Sue, you missed Judy. Look at Judy's back. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I know I've seen Judy before. And when she, is, are you? Yeah, I've done that. I think on the Bible study. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yes, but this I thought is Judy... on Molokai in Hawaii with a double oh, rainbow. Oh, oh, beautiful. That's cool. Very neat. I'm with you, Phil. Technologically, I'm just like, huh? <laughs> yes, on Molokai they had one person who went to Las Vegas and came back, and apparently brought the virus with him, and of course he lived in a house with like a dozen other family members and worked in one of the grocery stores. Oh, dear. Wow. Mm. So that has, that has wreaked havoc on the island of Molokai, but it looks like they've got it under control. Yeah. Wow. Is Molokai the leper colony one or is that a yes, different one? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, Judy, me Judy mentioned ahead. Goodwin House. Um, one thing that they're doing for their patients, um, I, and maybe for the whole, the uh, all every residents that live there, is if they have a birthday, they're doing virtual birthday parties. Oh, and good. so yeah. they're having a 100th birthday party for Becky next Friday. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, gosh. Nice. That's great. Wow. Great. Hey, let me brag on Bill Hook. Um, I'm in a minister's group that meets every Tuesday through this time. And uh, Bill actually spoke to our group yesterday on uh, uh, how ministers can understand uh, the world from a scientist's point of view and in relates to COVID. Bill, you did a great job. Great. Thank you. It was really a privilege to be with you, you all. <clears throat> Uh, the privilege was ours. Anybody else want to share anything before we go? <laughs> One thing I, I know of a, um, a family in the um, OTCC family that has extra masks, uh, like quite a few, and they were wondering if anyone knows of frontline workers or others that need masks. So if you do or know of anybody, just let me know and I can make that connection. Okay. That's great. Yeah. And I hope to start making them now because I just got a shipment today of a spool of elastic. <laughs> ah, nice. And I have a new sewing machine that I treated myself to. So, oh my goodness. so now let the fun begin. <laughs> ah. Viola, how do we know to how to participate in that virtual birthday? It's by invitation because we have, there's a limit on the number. So I have still working on the numbers. So it's not like a just drive by way. No, this is going to be in her unit. They have small oh. house concept. And so that the Goodwin house is providing the birthday cake, ice cream, balloons, and then the other residents would probably six or seven of them in her unit. Uh, in her small house, well, they'll probably all be around the dining room table. Uh, they're not, I don't think they're social distancing very much since they're all well and they know that they're well. And then the rest of us will be coming in on video somehow. I'm not sure how it works yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. Right. I was thinking maybe if it was a drive by. It would be nice, but uh, of course she couldn't, couldn't see a drive by anyway. She, she'd be lucky if she can see it on the big screen. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. She's she's almost blind now. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let so, me just uh, find my way back. Go ahead. So go ahead. 
Yeah, one of the things um, I'm not sure if our church family um, is aware of, but or we are aware of, if there are needs that um, that our church family has and and we're not aware of. So, if they are, then I wonder, you know, if there there's a way for us that for that to be communicated, so that if there's you know wherever the opportunities may may lie for us to um, provide some some or meet some of those needs would be a, a good avenue yeah absolutely um thank you david uh, that's a very important uh, uh reminder if if there are any needs that you know of in our church family if you have any needs uh, please don't hesitate to email me or brian directly and we will make sure uh that we get back to you respond to you and help in any way um that we're able to. Um, our, our email addresses are on the website, but we'll also, uh, Brian, do you know if there's anything specifically about uh, needs on the website or can we put something up um, to in that regard? Yeah, uh, currently there's not, but there can be. And if any of you are communicating to someone about sharing needs uh, with the church to help, you can uh, just reinforce that any anything that would be brought forward would be confidential and really the only further layer uh, past Phil or myself would be a smaller subset of deacons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Brian, Phil, where does the, um, when you click on the share um, link uh, on that daily prayer, where does that prayer go or that request go? So that goes to the uh, the office email account. Okay. Uh, uh, Crystal, feel free to fill in any gaps, but that that helps get added to the prayer list uh, if somebody chooses to share with the congregation. Okay. Um, the prayer list is accessed uh, on the e-news each week. Mm -hmm. And then the prayer list is developed and then sent back out. Um, there is uh, for any confidential prayers we have. Uh, there are a group. There's a smaller group that gets those. Where is the prayer list? I don't know where to access it. So it's in the E News every Saturday. Um, so it's towards the top. There's a giving button, and then there's prayer list. So it's updated each week, and um, it's there. Okay. I've never clicked on it. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same as the hard copy that we distribute. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking. That's a great question. Um, and thank you, David, for bringing that up. Any others? Anybody want a cooking demonstration? <laughs> I can attest we're eating you well over folks, here. You know, folks, that the link is in the chat for the chicken catchatory recipe. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> wow, that's fast. Yeah. The chat goes away when this. Thank yeah, you. the chat does go away. <laughs> yeah. Something else just went there. Oh, that's a long Copy That's it. the prayer list. Someone puts the prayer list with a huge. David, I know find it. how's your mom? How's Betty? Uh, yeah, she's doing fine. I spoke, with, I spoke with her yesterday or two days ago, but <laughs> she's hanging in there. She She's getting to that age where I think she is um, forgetting a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, yeah, she's been calling and telling me um, pretty much. She was very concerned about the, the breathing um, symptoms and so forth. And like, I just keep telling her that, you know, it's okay, it's okay. But I think it's mentally, it's it's like yeah. um, it's registering with her. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. How is food working for her? Is she still preparing meals? Um, no, my sister actually does a lot of the cooking and, and drops it off for her. So I think she's spending a lot more, uh, less time in the kitchen these days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, well go ahead. Sorry. I was supposed to find out today if they have a job through uh, Arlington County. There are 50 or 60 people who teach Spanish as a language and uh, they are seriously considering
cutting back all of those teachers. So that's not a good thing. She's got, you know, two kids, two teenagers, and uh, the condo to support. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, why don't we uh, why don't we wrap this up? Um, thank you, Chris. And let me just pray for us. You know, it's um, and just ask the Lord to continue to guide our steps and to, and to bring his mercy and his grace to all these. Uh, I know many of us are, are, are carrying lots of prayer requests. Um, what a what a great night to spend some time with Dr. Ivy. Um, and by the way, he lives here in Alexander. He's just a terrific guy. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to share uh, our ministry together uh, in this town hall, I'm so grateful for, for you being here tonight. Um, it's a big, big gift of your time. and really appreciate it. Um, I'll, let me just uh, close this in prayer. Lord, um, thank you so much. Um, it's been just a, a, just a lift to be able to um, just to, to talk with one another, um, to, um, to um, listen to Dr. Ivy and, and just share from a very practical way about ways we can uh, be healthy. And Lord, also just to, to name and, and voice some of the things that we may be feeling and that, that just feel chaotic and, and um, uh, Lord, just uh, that aren't familiar with us. And so it's just, thank you. Thank you for the way that he, you've given him the ministry of healing in this way. Um, Lord, I also just lift up our church to you. We, we do count on you, God, to guide our path, to light our steps. We trust you uh, with all uh, of, of every aspect of uh, this church. It is your church, Lord. And so we trust you with it. And we ask that you would um, just show us um, the next steps you want us to take. Um, and Lord, just continue to give us wisdom and discernment. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to have your eyes as we look into our community. And Lord, um, we know that, that we're not called uh, to do everything, but, we, but what you call us to do, you want us to give it everything we have. And so with that in mind, we just ask that you show us um, just those unique areas that you want us to step into uh, over the next months and years. Lord, I pray for our flock. I pray for our congregation. Lord, you know the concerns of, of each person. You know uh, the hurts that uh, people are carrying. Um, and Lord, I pray for an extra measure of mercy and grace. Uh, Lord, be with those who are struggling with physical illness. Lord, be with those who are struggling with emotional and mental health issues. Lord, be with those who are uh, concerned and worried about uh, their jobs in the future. Um, and we ask that you uh, take us by the hand um, and Lord, you carry us through this time. Lord, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Really good to be with you guys. Yeah, thank you, guys.